All right, today we're starting to work on our top bar hive. I ordered my bee package uh, last night. It should be shipped in here in a couple of weeks. So I wanna go ahead and get my uh, top bar hive started. Uh, what I'm working on now is the top bars. I'm going to uh, make mine with the cross section uh, that comes down to the triangular point with beeswax along that tip, but I'm gonna uh, shape these with the table saw. So right now I'm just cutting them to length of 17 inches. Now I've got this decent little stand for my uh, miter saw. I really like it, but uh, and it's got nice little stops built in, but if the measurement's too short, the stops are worthless. So what I did was I measured over marked my first board at 17 inches which is what the length of the top bars is supposed to be I clamped it to the backstop of the saw itself and then I came over to my uh, rest over here and clamped a piece of scrap piece of plywood down to act as a stop so every single one of these as soon as I cut one I can just slide it over boom cut it it's going to be the exact same length as the one to stop and measure every single one it took just a second to to set up the stop and considering that for a 48 inch top bar high that one and three eighths inch wide uh, bars you're looking at about 35 of them uh, the jig's going to come in very handy but at any rate that's what I'm doing now it's just a simple matter of cutting them off notice safety glasses clear lenses I don't like uh, tinted lenses and safety glasses, but I guess that's just a personal preference. I like to be able to see clearly. Um, these do have UV protection on them, uh, so it's just a matter of general safety from there on. Okay, now that I've got them all cut to length, I've gone through and based off the condition of the wood, uh, placement of knots, grain, directionality, I've marked what I want to be the bottom side of each top bar. Uh, now I'm going to make the uh, follower board top bars out of some three quarter inch cabinet grade plywood that I had some scraps of laying around. Okay. Uh, and I'm outside because it's a wonderful day and because there's a 30 horsepower diesel sailboat motor and not one but two. Uh, broken down motorcycles in my workshop right now taking up all the floor space so I don't have room to work in there I had to carry my stuff out here so but anyway that's gonna be the uh, follower board top bars and these I'm gonna mill uh, first thing I'm gonna do is cut them to the width uh, the plans I'm going by say the top bars should be one and three eighths of an inch wide at least for the brood bars, that when the bees get out to the honey bars, they like to uh, go to one and five eighths. So I might have to make some quarter inch spacers later on. Um, right now, I'm just going to go ahead and make everything one and three eighths, like the directions say. Okay. Now that everything is cut to width, and we've got several more cuts to make in order to mill these to the right shape. Uh, excuse the terrible artwork, but basically three quarters of an inch down, top bar is three quarters of an inch thick. You wanna step in and step in. This angle needs to be 45 degrees. So 22 and a half that way, 22 and a half that way. Wherever that intersects that three quarter line, that's what, what you take out. Then on each end, the same 22 and a half degree angle. Now as far as where it's located in from the, it's three quarters of an inch down, but the depth of it is determined by the width of the top of your follower board, which in this instance is these plans is 15 inches. So basically measure to my center, come out seven and a half, and that's where I want that point to be. That point right there should be at that seven and a half mark. Now there's an order to the cuts. We want to make this cut and this cut first. That way these two little pieces are still attached and we're gonna, we'll be making a flat cut as our last cut to remove the, the, the waste. Uh, that gives us a nice stable surface to work with. Whereas if we cut 
the two flat sides first and then came and cut the two angles well one angle we'd be fine we'd have a nice flat surface to work with but as soon as we flipped it around to cut the other angle it would get a little wobbly it'd be harder to control a little more dangerous especially when you got near the end of the cut and this piece started to break free uh, then you'd basically be trying to balance it on that point and keep it from biting into the saw and kicking back and everything else so basically you want to cut this cut this cut this cut that same cut on the other end and then the two flat cuts so for now it's just a basically a matter of taking one of my scrap pieces where I cut the 17 inch pieces out according to this plan the barefoot beekeepers plan uh, from biobees.com so I've got these short pieces of, of scrap left over from the two by twos that I cut from so I'll use those to determine uh, to play around and figure out exactly what my settings need to be to cut these out all right I've got all the side notches or the angle cut for the bases to come to the point I need to cut my end cuts and then do the flat cuts but that's what it looks like so far now, as far as the end cuts I know that the top of my follower boards is 15 inches so the top lips of my sides are going to be 15 inches apart on the inside so whenever I determine what that angle is I just need to make sure my cut is 15 inches from center to center which is since these are 17 will be one inch in so it'll be one inch in to the edge of the cut one inch into the edge of the cut that'll leave me my 15 inches and it'll make my top bar nice and tight all right one more step done I decided to mill these just for the heck of it I thought it'd be a better finished product but I'm starting to think it's a lot more hassle than what it's worth I've got 35 of these top bars and so far I've made five cuts to each one and I've got two more cuts to make to each one <laughs> so it's a little bit of a pain I think if I do this again if I build another hive I'm gonna go with a different uh, top bar design uh, or I'm gonna buy some triangular molding uh, and figure some some kind of way out of attaching it instead of milling these pieces as one solid unit uh, I did wind up making it just a little bit less than 15 inches from that point to that point uh, that way it will have just a little bit of play like a sixteenth of an inch or so a sixteenth to an eighth uh, so it won't stick so it'll be easy to get in and out but at the same time it won't have too much room to walk side to side back and forth all right, on to the next. All I've got left to do now is uh, go all the way around them, making the cut at three quarters of an inch depth. All right, there you go. Uh, there's all the top bars, 35 of them, which with the followers, I'll have a couple of extra, but they just need a little bit of sanding and then some beeswax along the point there. Uh, I've heard a couple different ways. I've heard you can take a block of beeswax and just rub it along the, the point and that that's good enough. And then I've heard that it's best if you melt the beeswax and paint it on uh, so that the wood will actually soak some of it into the pores and it'll absorb it so you get a better bond for the uh, bees to start building their new comb off of it. Uh, be more secure all around, although I think the bees know how to <laughs> hook their comb up but uh, I'm probably going to melt it down and paint it on just because I do like the idea of the wood being able to absorb some of it so it's staying there longer uh, in case the bees don't get to it right away or if I keep them closed down to a smaller section I still got to learn more about that but there we go I'm about to cut the uh, I've already laid them out there we go this is a used piece of uh, is that seven ply I think it's a seven ply, half inch plywood. Uh, 
much furniture cabinet grade whatever you want to call it uh, I've already laid them out according to the the plans for the barefoot beekeeper guides 15 inches across the top make your mark seven and a half to get your center and then five inches across the bottom you know two and a half each way 11 inches tall uh, so there's follower one follower two once I get those cut I can attach the, them to uh, the flat top bars that I cut out of the three-quarter cabinet grade ply and then I can start uh, working on the rest of the uh, hive uh, tonight I'm gonna try before it gets dark on me I'm gonna try cutting all my boards to length and ripping what I need to add on for the total width because uh, I couldn't afford wood wide enough to get 12 inches out of it in one shot so I'm gonna have to build it up to it I bought uh, I think eight by or no ten by so I'm gonna have to cut a couple pieces to length and then make a couple of rips and glue them up uh, overnight tonight and that way I can start assembling it in the morning so I'm gonna try to get all that cut up even if I have to set up a work light out here I'm gonna get that done uh, all right till next time